Okay, it says I'm live. All right, can you guys see me? I'm live. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> if you can see or hear and or hear me, um, can you just drop something into the chat? Give me a thumbs up. I'm using a brand new program. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, not techie. Trying to advance my skill level. Uh, and I'm not feeling well. So, <laughs> ah, okay, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sisters. I appreciate it. Okay, so first things first, let me apologize. I am not feeling well. I have been coughing my head off all morning. So if I start coughing, I will mute my mic. Just bear with me, guys, please. Um, even, you know, <laughs> even those of us in the healthcare industry sometimes get sick. So um, as always, please feel free to drop your questions into the chat. I will read them and I will get back to you. I will uh, give you an answer. And while I'm waiting for questions to roll in, um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about a, a subject that's very misunderstood with the state exam and it's called indirect care. Now, something that most of you guys probably, oh, thank you, Katie, I appreciate it. Hi, Milagro. Um, something that you guys may or may not know is that when you're, you're graded on the state exam, um, oh, thank you, Agnes. <laughs> when you're graded on the state exam, there's nothing subjective about this. The evaluators can only use published criteria to um, pass you, you know, to check off a step. So what does that mean? Well, you know, on my YouTube channel, I get a million comments on there. And sometimes a comment will say something like, um, I put the pillow or I changed the pillowcase before I changed the, the sheet. And that caused me to fail. And um, that's not necessarily true. So I want to kind of explain how the grading process works. So, okay. So you guys, um, we, we've seen this before, you know, my clinical skills checklist. This is actually Prometrics clinical skills checklist. And I've talked about this before. This is um, what they're grading you on for these skills. So if you got this particular skill, so this one is feeding the resident who's in a chair, feeding the resident who's in a chair. These are the checkpoints they're going to grade you on. Now, there are uh, down at the bottom some called indirect care. So they're not actually listed on here, and it can be very confusing for students because, um, well, wait a minute, <laughs> you're failing me. <coughs> you're saying, um, Okay, Angel, is there a sound issue? Thanks, I'll have to work on that a little bit more. Um, hi, Kanisha. Okay, so um, so indirect care is kind of graded separately from the um, clinical skills checklist. So what I did was I went to um, Prometrics website and I actually printed off the... Um, the indirect care worksheet that the evaluators have to go by. Now, this isn't a, um, you know, a guide for them. This is actual instructions that they have to follow. And this is the first page. Okay, so uh, let me come over here. So this is the first page of that um, clinical skills uh, or indirect care. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see. So if you look up here, um, so when you're ambulating, there's a couple things that they are going to specifically look out for. And one of those is refrain from touching resident before hands are clean. So that's an infection control issue. So let me just move it over here for a second. That's an infection control issue. So if you go in, hi, Ms. Jones, my name is Patty. I'm your CNA today, and I'm here to uh, walk you or take you for a walk or however you want to introduce it and then you forget to close a curtain to wash your hands you're actually going to be graded under infection control for that because it's specified right here now there are some that are just um, a, a little more generic like 
per checkpoint. Anytime you see that per checkpoint, it just means whatever's on the checklist is what they're going to grade you on. But there are some specifics. So I want to go back here under safety and talk about this. So if you look at the first one on safety, it says leaves call light in or near residence and or on the bed within reach at end of skill. Now, that doesn't, it's worded differently than it is on all the others. So if you look at the bedpan one just below, it says leave call light in or near residence hand at end of skill. The ambulate one has an extra allowance. It says or on the bed within reach. So I bring this up and, and there's five pages of this guys. So let me get rid of that so we can see. There's five pages of indirect care and it's all done by skill and this is public knowledge it's actually on Prometrics website so if you go onto Prometrics website and you click under candidate resources and scroll down you'll actually see indirect care measurement forms um, let me get hold on a second so when you're taking the test a lot of people kind of focus on that whole um, the clinical skills checklist and that's a good thing to focus on it is that's 90 percent of what you're being graded on but don't forget that there's a whole nother checklist that the evaluators have to abide by called indirect care um, and you really need to be aware of what you're being graded on there so every other skill when the patient's lying in bed, because almost all the skills patient will end up in bed at the end of the skill, then your um, checkpoint is going to say, you know, the call light just has to be within reach. With Ambulate, you don't physically have to put that call light in their hand or right next to them. It can actually be on the bed within reach. So that's kind of an important distinction because a lot of times when you know I read through the comments on YouTube people will get into um, friendly uh, <laughs> discourse <laughs> friendly <coughs> banter and they'll say something like um, well you have to do this or you have to do that and that may or may not be a hundred percent true so when you get this um, information from people when you know very well many people give you information regarding the test it's always best always best to go back and review the actual grading forms for yourself to make sure that the information you're receiving is correct okay so in um, indirect care and I'm gonna do a whole lesson on this on my website so that you guys can actually see all of the indirect care forms and you'll be able to um, let me see if I can work on that sound. Does it sound better now? Does it sound better? I just turned it down a little bit. Okay. So let's see who's here. Um, Milagro says, I'm here. Hi, Milagro. Katie says, feel better. Thank you. Agnes, thank you. I'll try my best to get well. Um, Nicola, hello. Blessings to you and your family. Have a wonderful New Year. Thank you so much and blessings to you as well. I'm really hoping that 2022, we can kind of move forward again. Um, the 20s just haven't been a great decade for us so far. Um, so Nita, 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 uh, says, hello, Miss Patty. Sorry, you're not feeling well. Thank you, Angel. Um, Angel, if you can um, just let me know if the sound is any better. I did turn it down just a little bit. Let me little bit more there that should work on the sound um mary mary booberry i love that name that's adorable uh says hi miss patty i just wanted to give another update after passing my state test i just accepted a job offer for the cvicu that is amazing that is awesome i'm so proud of you for those of you that don't know the cvicu is the cardiovascular icu so this is going to have to do with heart primarily after heart surgery or other procedures that have to do with the heart. And um, I spent uh, quite a bit of my career in 
cardiology, um, cardiology office, and then again in the um, ICU with cardiac patients. And uh, cardiology really kind of is one of my big loves. I love it. Um, you'll, you're going to learn a ton. You're going to have so much fun and uh, pick up a lot of uh, really unique things working in the CVICU. So congratulations to you. That's an awesome accomplishment. So let's see here. Um, Kenesha says hello. Hi. Sophia says hello. Hi. And Milagro says, I'll be doing my Prometric test soon. I'm so nervous. Okay, so Milagro, let me go over this with you really quickly. So on the screen, you're about to see a little video that I made about the written test. So let me show this to you really quickly. So the written test, there's five things. You guys have heard me say this over and 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 over again. I just made just this little graphic to uh, help tell the story. So during uh, the written exam, there's five main things they're going to be uh, grading you on. Patient rights, safety, both yours and the patient's, knowing your role, knowing your normals, and infection control. Now, if you get this down, if you understand this, these five topics, you'll be fine on the written test. Skills test, however, for the skills test, you're going to need um, to understand the principles, so how to do each one of the skills. And there's 11 principles that you have to learn. We have videos on our website for all of it. So if you go on to fouryourcna.com, so it's the number four, Y-O-U-R, cna.com so let's see if i can make this work oh, they're both on there okay can't make that work so it's for your cna.com and uh click on animated click on uh training and then animated lessons and it'll go over a lot of those principles that you need to learn for the um skills test so joyce says aloha aloha joyce Happy New Year's. I have my Prometric test January 10th. Oh, how wonderful. January 10th is a very, very special day in my life. So I wish you double blessings and luck. Um, Jennifer says, so, hi. Hi, Jennifer. So do you know the reason why Florida residents don't have to take the class and we can just walk in and take the boards? I think you mentioned before it's because most people there are retired. Okay. Yes, it all has to do, like everything else, with supply and demand. In Florida, we have way more demand for CNAs. I mean, we need CNAs in home care, in hospitals, in nursing homes, in assisted living facilities, in residential treatment centers, in all different types of places. And we have a lot of retirees, which means that a lot of people in Florida need health care. So because of the demand, they have allowed challengers um, in Florida. Now, <laughs> if you want my honest opinion about this, it's not a good policy. Um, you know, I, I personally feel now, you know, I, I, you know, I make my living off of producing materials for challengers, but um, as a nurse, I think that we are doing our um, client base a disservice because I think there's a lot of people out there that are unethical, that take people's money and don't give them a good quality education. And then the CNAs get lucky on the test, but they take those fallacies out into the workplace with them. And that's really hard to overcome. I actually saw a quote this week that I loved. I absolutely love this quote. Here it is. I wrote it down because I love this. So a fallacy is knowing enough about a subject to think you are right, right? So you guys have been listening to me. You know enough about CNA work that you think you know the right way to do things. But you don't know quite enough about the subject to know when you're wrong. Right? So I think that that happens a lot is that um, students go to a test prep. They learn things that maybe aren't exactly correct. They go in, they get past the test. They go into the workplace and they take that knowledge with them and they're practicing um, using incorrect or outdated information. And then they try to pass that on to people because they think that they're correct. Um, they just don't know enough to know that they're not. And that's, uh, that's kind of a scary thing. 
So as an RN in Florida, I don't like this policy. As um, somebody who's just trying to help you guys learn the proper way to do things, that's kind of my way of combating this um, to make sure that you guys are out there performing skills well, um, having complete knowledge so that you're not passing on incomplete knowledge to others. So um, hopefully that kind of clears that up. Um, so Stella says, hi, Nurse Patty. Um, Stella, as you can see, I'm kind of losing my voice, so bear with me. Um, Paulette says, uh, hi, Miss Patty. I passed my state exam on the 16th of December. That was my Christmas gift. I'm so happy. Your videos really helped. That is awesome. I'm so happy for you. That's incredible. That, and that's a lot to be very proud of. Um, gaining a state certification in anything is a great accomplishment. So congratulations. Um, so let's see here. Agnes says, sorry, I didn't see clearly on the chart you were using. So Agnes, if you go in, let me type this in so you guys can, so you'll know where to find it. Okay. So if you go to prometric.com forward slash FL, um, oh, hold on, nurse aid FL. So if you go to that website and under candidate resources, scroll all the way down and when you scroll all the way down you'll see indirect care um just open it up and and you can save it to your computer or to your phone or whatever it's free information for you there's nothing hidden um let's see here uh kanisha it's a new year i'm getting ready to take the cna state test just want to know what's on it i'm really nervous well, Kanisha, I can't really tell you exactly what's on the test. First of all, that's um, not ethical, right? Second of all, it's impossible because the, the versions of the state test change all the time. Different questions. The questions that somebody is taking on the state exam today are not the same questions that will be there next week because they change. And that's to preserve test integrity. So I can't tell you what's on the test. Neither can anybody else. But in a clinical setting, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just memorize a whole bunch of answers because these are people's lives that we're playing with. So we have to take a, a, a different approach to this. Instead of knowing what's on the test, we need to be aware of our skills and what our role is um, to effectively assist patients. So those are the five things that I showed you earlier, okay? So you need to be aware of resident rights. What does that mean? Well, don't treat adults like children, ever, ever. An adult in a facility is not in jail. So you can't um, keep them from doing something, you can't restrict them, you can't do anything like that. They're adults. Adults have the right to argue with one another. Adults have the right to make bad decisions. Adults have the right to do whatever adults are going to do. So the first thing is to protect their rights. The second thing, when it's, let me pull this up again. Hold on, so you guys can see this. The second thing is safety. You need to know, you need to know safety, not just patient safety, but your safety as well. So you need to be aware of what kind of things would affect patient safety and your safety. You need to know your role. And this is probably the biggest thing about the CNA world. CNAs follow the care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the care plan. That is your role. You do not make decisions ever, ever. You do not make decisions. You follow the care plan, and you report to the nurse anything you cannot do. Now, the only exception to that are emergency procedures, so CPR, and you have to take a whole separate class for that. You have to learn CPR, because that's the only time that you are allowed in emergency situations that you are allowed to think on your own. That's it, that is it, okay? You also need to know normals. Um, so this is what are normal vital signs? What are normal um, skin changes in the elderly? What's normal? And then you have to um, know infection control. And that's a really big part of the state exam, especially with COVID, right? We don't want to get our patients sick. 
So those are things that um, you really want to be aware of. Okay, that's the, the best information I can give you about the test. Okay, so Jennifer says, I was just telling my husband about that and he was wondering why. I guess all you have to do is be a good test taker. Absolutely, Jennifer, and that's a little scary. Um, Debbie, hello. Jennifer, do they have a hands-on test too? Yes, they do have a, in Florida, we have a hands-on test. Mona says, hi, Miss Patty. Happy holidays. Hi. Tanya says, hi, Miss Patty. I'm new here. And I'm also getting ready to take the CNA written test and skills test. I'm very anxious and nervous. Is there anything you can recommend me to do before the state exam? Go over those five things that I just mentioned. Okay. Make sure that you know. Go to my website, foryourcna.com. It's the number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A.com. Look under training, animated lessons, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff there that's free for you to be able to prepare for the state exam. Emma says, hi. Debbie says, Miss Patty, I'm here in Dubai, also working on my CNA. That's awesome. And Fred says, today is not May 20th. Um, you are correct. Uh, today is uh, 1230, where I'm not sure where it says May 20th. This is a brand new system. Um, so I, I, I set it up and I'm not entirely sure I got it right. Um, I'm relying on you guys to give me feedback. Uh, I'll be adding some new things in as I go, but I have to kind of learn them in order to implement them. So um, this is kind of a work in progress. We're hoping to be able to uh, bring in on-screen um, aids and, and things like that, like I did today. So um, hopefully you guys find this helpful. All right, Kanisha says, okay, sorry, Miss Patty, I was... Just saying that I was working as a PCA in the floor of my job, but I can't do it anymore because I have to take my state exam. Yes, that is correct. There was a temporary um, state, um, most states allowed a temporary nursing assistant during COVID. That ends in most states on, on tomorrow, 1231. So if you were working under that temporary, you probably have been removed um, from assignments until you get your certification. So um, just kind of watch the videos that I have, the skills videos and the animated lessons, and they'll get you caught up to speed. Guys, I hate to, to wrap up a little bit early, but I am losing my voice, and it's getting really hard for me to talk. So um, it was great to see you guys this week. Hopefully next week I'll have a voice, and uh, we'll be able to uh, get into a little bit more um, information. So save the rest of your questions until next week. I don't have anybody that told me that they passed the CNA state exam on my YouTube channel in the comments, but I do have three that are waiting on results. Um, Deandra Coakley, Charmaine Monteith, and Matt the Patriot. I'm waiting on um, results for you. And Julissa P. has her skills test tomorrow. So we're going to wish her lots of, of um, success. And for all of you that are getting ready to test, we uh, send all kinds of good vibes your way, but you've got this. Just watch the videos. You've got this, I promise. Um, until next time, guys, I will see you same time, same place, Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern on my YouTube channel. Um, have a fantastic holiday. Stay safe. I hope to see you all back next week. And Happy New Year to all of you. Bye-bye.